What's up guys, it's Travis. In this video, I'm building a media cabinet for my great room. But before I started building anything, I designed the entire thing in Fusion 360. Once I was happy with my design, I made detailed plans, 30 pages of detailed plans. I'm going to be following those plans when I do my build. If you guys are interested in these plans, they're available on my website. There's a link in the video description. The first thing I wanna do is cut all of my panels and boards and label them just like in my plans. I used Cutlist Optimizer to get the most out of this expensive maple plywood, and I included all of my Cutlist in my detailed plans. This Cutlist makes this so much easier. Thanks, Travis, from a few days ago. Now I'm gonna get my track saw out and cut this plywood into the panels. As I was cutting out all my panels, I labeled all the pieces just like in my Cutlist. That way later, I can assemble everything IKEA style. Next, I'm going to use my cut list that I made earlier to cut out all the hard maple for the front face and the doors. I chose maple because I'm painting this cabinet and hard maple is very dent resistant because, well, it's hard. And it also takes paint very well. When you start cutting your plywood, be sure you have an appropriate blade in there for cutting plywood. I had my ripping blade in there, which is not a good blade for cutting plywood, and I got some nasty tear out. But that's okay, because I can hide most of it in the assembly process, and what I can't hide in the assembly process, I can fix during painting. Are you guys subscribed yet? You're not? All right, well, before I get to that next step, please hit that subscribe and like button. Okay, let's get back to it. Next, I'll be grabbing my side and back panels and cutting dado slots in them. This will make for a nice, easy, and strong glue up. First, I'm gonna cut the quarter inch dado in all my panels. I'm gonna do that with a flat curve blade and taking two passes and test fitting a piece of quarter inch plywood until it fits perfectly. Once I was happy with the fit, I repeated that cut on the rest of the panels. Next, I installed a three quarter inch wide dado set for the dado slots the three quarter inch plywood would sit in. You could do this with multiple passes with a flat curve blade, but this is way faster. Then I set the cut depth to a quarter of an inch. Then I use a scrap piece of wood to test my setup. And what do you know it, looks like I nailed it. Good job, Travis, from a few days ago. Now all I had to do was add the same dado cut to the real panels. This next panel is too long to put in my table saw, so I can't use my dado set. But as an alternative, I'm going to use my router with a three quarter inch router bit to cut this dado in here. If you don't have a dado set, you could have done that for all of these three quarter inch dados. Now I'm gonna turn my attention to the back panel. I need to cut some holes in it to allow wires to pass through. If you have a lot of equipment in your media cabinet, you also might wanna consider adding some air holes for airflow and maybe even a fan. It's almost time for us to start gluing this carcass together, but before we do that, let's sand all the pieces individually first. Now I'm gonna start assembling the carcass. I'm gonna start with the bottom and the sides. Be sure to use plenty of wood glue and clamps. I like these clamps for assembling cabinets and I put a link to these in the video description. The dado slots we cut earlier make assembly a snap and these clamps hold the panels square while the glue dries. It's also a good idea to continually check for square along the way because the rest of the assembly will go much better that way. So this side is all dry, so I'm gonna flip this whole thing over and do the same thing on the other side. I don't have clamps long enough to clamp this joint, so I'm assembling it with the panel vertically to use the weight of the panel as a clamp until the glue dries. You remember when I said buy more clamps? If I had longer clamps, I wouldn't be doing something crazy like this. Buy more clamps! Now I'm gonna go ahead and install this bottom support piece using wood glue, pocket hole screws, and brad nails in the top. Be sure to keep checking for square as you're building. I just got done test fitting the back panel and it fits great. I'm gonna put some glue just on the bottom to hold it in place, but I'm gonna let the sides float. Next, I installed the divider in the middle. I used wood glue in the dado slot on the bottom, clamped it in place, double checked for square, and then secured it with brad nails from the back. Next, I'm going to install top braces along here and here with wood glue and pocket hole screws. Pocket holes are perfect for assembling cabinet carcasses. These braces will add strength while keeping the cabinet square. They will also be used later to screw on the top. 
I'll be installing a support piece here on the back next using pocket hole screws, wood glue, and clamps to hold it to this back wall. The cool thing about using pocket holes in this location is that once the top is installed, they will be completely hidden. Now is a good time to add the holes for the adjustable shelf pins. To do this, I'm using this Craig adjustable shelf pin jig. I put a link to this jig in the video description. Now I'm going to be moving on to the front face. To build the front face, I'm going to be using the hard maple pieces that I cut earlier. It's much easier to do as much sanding as possible before you start to assemble. For assembly, I'm going to be using wood glue and pocket hole screws. So the first thing I had to do was make the pocket holes. It's time to glue and screw together the frame with pocket hole screws. But when you're working with very hard wood like this hard maple, I always use fine threaded pocket hole screws. Pocket holes tend to pull the pieces being joined out of alignment a little bit because they're installed at an angle. This offset can be minimized with clamps. You could also use dowels with wood glue and clamps to assemble the front face. I didn't record it, but once the frame was fully assembled, I installed it using wood glue and brad nails. The front face is installed and is looking good, but before I install the top, it'd be much easier for me to sand the front face and make it perfect now. This is also a good time for me to fill all of these nail holes. Next, I'm going to grab all the edge pieces for the top, add miter cuts, and then cut them to their final size. These pieces add a nice finished look to the edge of the plywood. Now to install these edge pieces, you can either use wood glue and brad nails or wood glue and finishing screws. I've decided I'm going to use finishing screws. The finishing screws provide more holding power than brad nails, but they leave a relatively small hole to fill. Now that the top is all done, we can attach it to the cabinet using wood glue and screws from the inside. I adjusted the top until it was flush with the back and had a one inch overhang on the sides. Then I used one and a quarter inch pocket hole screws to attach the top to the cabinet. Now I'm going to grab the styles and rails I cut earlier for the doors. Using my flat kerf blade, I'm going to cut a three quarter inch deep dado slot in all of the boards. Using a test piece, make one pass offset from the center of the board and then flip the board and make another pass. Keep making adjustments until the quarter inch plywood fits perfectly. Now do the same thing on all of your rails and styles. Once you have all of these dado cuts done, you're done with the styles or the vertical pieces, so you can set those aside. Now I'm going to reinstall my dado set to cut the 3 quarter inch tenons in the rail pieces. You should remove just enough material here to line up with that dado slot you cut earlier. Once you like the fit of the tenon, then set the length of the tenon. It should be around three quarters of an inch, but I would suggest sneaking up on it and test fitting until it's perfect. Once it's perfect, repeat cutting the tenons on the rest of the rail pieces. Now we can start to assemble the doors. We're going to take one rail and two styles and glue them together. Then we're going to slide in the panel and then glue on a top rail. If you like, you can use some of these rubber space balls to keep the panels from rattling. I put a link to these in the video description. I only use space balls on the top and bottom, but they can be used on the sides as well. I didn't put them on the sides because I was worried I would knock them out when I slid the panel in. Once you have everything assembled, clamp it up and let it dry overnight. To build the shelves, I'm going to grab the panels that I cut earlier in the video and cut a clearance hole on the back of the shelf for wires and cables. Now I'm going to use some brad nails and some wood glue to attach a piece of hard maple to the front of the shelf to clean it up and add a little bit of stiffness. And that's pretty much it. Then the shelves are done. Next I'm going to grab the doors and install the concealed hinges per the manufacturer's instructions. I'll be using this Craig Concealed Hinge Jig to do this. It makes it super easy. I put a link to this jig in the video description as well as the hinges. Since this hard maple is so hard, I enlarge the screw holes a bit to make the screws easier to install. Now attach the doors to the front face and adjust the doors for a perfect fit. If you're interested, I made a full video on installing and adjusting this type of hinge. This thing has turned out great so far and I'm super proud of it. There's one more step I'd like to do that's optional. I'm gonna add a piece of the baseboard that I have in the rest of my house to the bottom of this cabinet. To prepare my cabinet for sanding and painting, I'm going to remove the doors and the hinges. 
This will make everything a whole lot easier. When I remove the hinges, I'm also going to mark them with the right location so adjustments will be easier later. Once I had everything disassembled, I filled the holes with wood filler. Then I sanded everything to 220 grit sandpaper. There was a ton of sanding to do, but it's worth putting in the effort now to have a great finish later. Once everything was sanded, I used my Graco X5 sprayer to spray on the primer. I put a link to this sprayer in the video description. Once the primer was dry, I sanded with 220 grit sandpaper. It was finally time for painting. I painted everything once, then sanded the highly visible surfaces, and then sprayed a second coat. This was my first time spraying, and I made a huge mess. The next time, I plan to mask off the room better and use a painter's suit. After letting the paint dry for a few days, I reinstalled the hinges and attached the doors to the cabinet. Then I made some final adjustments to the hinges and installed some bumpers. And finally, I finished the cabinet with some nice hardware. I think this thing turned out awesome. What do you guys think? Leave a comment and let me know. And while you're at it, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next video. To build the front face, I'm going to be using the hard maple. What we're gonna do is glue one rail onto two slides, styles,